Although the Razer Normal Chroma looks freaking awesome with that RGB base, you don't pick a speaker based on how it looks, you pick a speaker based on how it sounds. So I'm going to compare the Razer Normal Chroma to two other speakers in the same price range, the Bose Companion 2 Series 3 and the Logitech Z623. And if you didn't know, I'm actually doing a giveaway for the Razer Normal Chroma. So watch that video after you're done watching this video so you know how to enter. So money-wise, the Bose Companion Series 3 is the least expensive speaker here retailing for $99.99. Now you could get the base Razer Nomo speaker without the RGB base for $99.99 as well, but you're also giving up a few key features that I will go into in a minute. The Logitech Z623 retails for $149.99, but they're usually on sale for $99.99 over at Amazon. And the Razer Nomo Chroma are the newest and most expensive speakers here retailing for $149.99. If you want to pick either of these speakers up, I'll have links in the description below, and if you use either of the links, it really helps out the channel. Okay, let's talk speaker setup. The Razer Nomo Chroma has a dual channel setup with 3 inch diameter drivers and rear firing base ports. It's also worth mentioning that it connects to your computer via a USB port, whereas with the base Razer Nomo speaker, you're giving up that USB audio connection and built in DAC, and instead you have to connect to your computer via a 3.5mm audio jack. And on top of that, you're giving up the RGB goodness. The Bose speakers connect to your computer via a 3.5mm audio jack, also has a dual channel setup, and has a single driver in each housing unit. And then there's the Logitech Z623, which also connects to your computer via a 3.5mm audio jack, but if you wanted to, you could also use an RCA connection. But the Logitech is a 2.1 speaker setup. You have your dual satellite speakers with 2.5 inch diameter drivers, and a subwoofer with a diameter of 6 inches. Now before we get into the sound test, just know that all three of these speakers are playing at the same loudness so you can get a feel for their sound quality. Now, I just want to put it out there that the Logitech gets the loudest here when the computer and the speakers themselves are turned all the way up, but at that max volume, everything is just distorted. Personally, I think the Logitech Z623 sounds decent up until the dial is turned 3 quarters of the way up. After that, it's just a mess. But even then, the Logitech still gets louder than the Razer or the Bose. The Normal Chroma is the second loudest speaker, and when the Bose is at max volume, it gets as loud as the Normal Chroma when it's at 80% volume. Now, I'm making this video with gamers in mind, and it's no surprise that the Bose speakers are the most tamed here. And in Bose fashion, they have very well-defined mids and vocals, and they also do a very good job of preventing sound distortion at max volume. But granted, they don't get that loud. But to my surprise, the Razer Nomo Chroma actually performs pretty similar to the Bose speakers when they're in their music preset. And just like the Bose speakers, they have very well-defined mids and vocals, but with more punch in their bass. They also get louder, and they do a pretty good job of preventing sound distortion when the volume is all the way up. Whereas the sound quality on the Logitech isn't the best for listening to music. Instrument separation is very weak, everything sounds like they're on the same plane, and the highs tend to sound tinny. But like I mentioned earlier, I'm making this video with gamers in mind, and the subwoofer included with the Logitech can really get our room shaking. If you're playing a game and if there's a rocket launching in the background, you're going to feel like you're actually there. If you're firing a gun, you're going to feel every shot in your chest. The subwoofer that comes included with the Logitech just gives you an extra dimension of immersiveness that neither the Bose nor the Noma Chroma can offer. The Razer Nomo Chroma does have a gaming preset which pushes the mids back and puts an emphasis on the lows so that when you fire a gun, you feel the punch in your chest, but the effect is nowhere near as immersive or as impressive as the Logitech for $100. 
plainly said, if you're looking for a budget speaker setup strictly for gaming, you're better off going with the Logitech Z623 over the Noma Chroma. For $100, you're getting a dual speaker setup with a subwoofer that shakes everything around you. And for gaming, that's kind of what you're looking for. The Noma Chroma also has a good amount of punch in its base, but nowhere near as much as the Logitech for obvious reasons. The Razer Noma Chroma are a pair of well-rounded speakers that sound good and look even cooler with their RGB lighting, but like I said on my initial review, build quality isn't the best. Personally, I think if you go for the Noma Chroma, it's more about aesthetics. If you're looking for a wall shaking base like the Logitech Z623, you're going to have to wait for the Razer Noma Pro and pay five times the price. But given the performance found on the Noma Chroma, I'm pretty excited to see what the inclusion of a subwoofer and dual tweeters will bring on the Razer Noma Pro. I just hope Razer will use some beefier screws this time around. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It helps out more than you realize. For more product reviews and deal alerts, check out jimcaddy.net. If you want to support the channel, pick up a shirt. And I'll catch you next time.